Safari catches the biggest bass. There we go. There's one in the fountain. Not a bad one either, dude. Feels like a pretty good one. Oh yes, yeah, I saw like two pounder. So there we go. One of the frog. I think it's a good one too. Dude, I think it's a good one. Yeah, it's a big one. Dude. Good one on the frog, baby. Easy, but like a three and a half and probably eight. There we go. <laughs> hey, that's another good one. What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. So today it is 5.45. We are about to go do some Google Maps fishing. We're starting off at a pond that I've actually already been to, but me and Greg fished, I haven't been to it in a couple of years, but it was pretty loaded. Like it was a neighborhood pond. I'm not sure if it's still loaded, of course, but we're gonna go try it, check it out, see if hopefully we can get on some fish in it. And then there's a whole bunch of other ponds that we can go fish around this one. So hopefully we'll be able to find some big bass this evening. I have two top waters tied on. I have a walking bait, a frog, and a rattle trap. So we're not going any Texas rigs. We've been fishing Texas rigs and I feel like we've been having to fish a little bit slower than what I like to. So today we're changing that. We're switching it up. We're not throwing any more little baits. We're throwing the big boys, the biggins for big, big mouth bass. So stay tuned. We are on the way to the pond. We got like a 30 minute drive. It's kind of far from where we're at now. So stay tuned. Hopefully we'll be able to get on some big old big mouth bass. See y'all when we get there. Ooh, all right, guys, we have made it to pond number uno for the day. Super, super excited for this. Oh, there's like a perfect frog opportunity right there. I didn't think when I pulled up, I was like, eh, I don't know if we're gonna be able to throw the frog, but I'm gonna run back up and grab it. Yeah, there's a pretty like juicy looking little drainage hole over here. I'd love to be able to catch a frog fish in a pond. I haven't done it in a while. I feel like the more I fish, the more I want to say, I feel like I know what to do so I don't just try things anymore. Man, this would be a perfect pond to dump the kayak in because like fishing over there on that side, that's probably pretty good. All right, we're going to start off heavy frogging, heavy frogging. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Hey, did you get it? No, missed it. Just had a bite though. You wanna come up and try to eat it? Oh, it's been so long since I fished like a frog from the bank. There, oh, we had a bite, dude. I'm so happy I brought this frog. I had no clue that this would be like happening over here. Dude, that was our first bite on the frog. Let's go, we got two on it. Two bites, not two fish. That one didn't get it good though. Yeah. So this is probably about the only spot in this pond like this, just because it's the wind's blowing over here. Like stuff like this in ponds kind of just collects in one pocket normally. You never know, like on the back side there might be some more, but I'm not really sure what's around so we'll have to fish it a little bit to find out hey that's a good sign though getting one on the frog early i have a popping frog in my backpack i might switch over to that one kind of fish it out in the middle a little bit if they're willing to eat a frog ah i hope i didn't mess this up all right, now I'm kind of conflicted. Do I want to fish the rattle trap down the dam right here? Or do I want to walk the bank and throw this frog? I think we're going to walk the bank and throw the frog probably out in the middle a little bit because I see a little bit more grass. And if we can do like a Google Maps frog video, shh, what? You already know that's what y'all are going to get. Hey, I mean, we're not even three minutes in fishing this pond and we already got a bite on it.
All right. We're going to say it's a no for the frog. Isn't that awesome? We just cast this slap up on the bank. Isn't that just amazing? Isn't it just amazing? Gotta love it, man. Gotta love it. Whew. It's been a minute since I found like a good pond where I felt like pretty comfortable with throwing a slobber knocker in it. But, I mean, this one just sets up perfect with the grass in it and everything. It's like, be crazy not to throw. There, oh, we got eight right there. That was a bite. We got eight right there. Oh, he messed us up. There. We got first one on the slobber knocker. There we go. There's one in the fountain. Not a bad one either, dude. Feels like a pretty good one. Oh yes, yeah, I saw like two pounder. So yeah, I cast it all the way into like the spray of the fountain and just let it sit. One came up and ate it. Let's go. Oh, that's the, dude, he's fighting good. Come here. Oh, dude, that's like a four, three pounder, two pounder. I was not expecting that. Look at that one. Woo. On that slobber knocker. Let's go. All right, we're gonna try to get us another one. We'll go right back in the same spot. I was fishing a creek bank today and I kicked a piece of glass. I didn't say anything about it in the video because it scared me so bad I just couldn't. I kicked a piece of glass and I went to move the piece of glass because I mean, it was like slap dab in the middle of the creek. So if somebody was walking through, you probably would have stepped on it. If I wouldn't have on, if I wouldn't have had on shoes, I probably would be in the hospital right now. But I stepped on it and like I reached down to, or I turned around to move it and there was like a baby. I don't know what it was. It was like a beige snake. It looked like a rattlesnake down on the creek bank, but I don't think it was. I'm not too familiar with my breeze of snake but i mean it was probably about that long and like super thin definitely a baby snake but whew, that was that was rough for me to see today because i mean i was right like there with it about to pick it up and it's just crazy because that's like the second snake i've ever seen in that pond and i was trying to do a good deed so i just <laughs> left the piece of glass because i was like eh -eh. but i mean it was a pretty big piece of glass like nobody should step on it but i was just gonna you know try to do the right thing and move it up out of the way all right boys we got second fish and it was a good one all right first fish we've had three bites so far two on the frog one on the slobanaka kind of far out in the middle so we've had a bite kind of 10 feet 15 feet off the bank then we just had another one out in the middle right by the fountain i might try to go a little bit to like either the right or left if we can get another one but that first one was definitely a good sign there's definitely some bigger ones in here we just gotta fish them hard and probably fish them out a little bit hey man this would probably be a really nice pond to drop a kayak into go back in that same spot just let it sink i mean there definitely has to be more on that fountain right there and also probably if we went to the other side and just hit it from the opposite side we might be able to catch another one Guys, make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video because I've done a couple of these Google Maps videos, but they're so much fun just because like the potential is endless. Even if we don't hit another pond today, like if we're catching them good in this one, we'll probably just stay here, but I'm gonna show y'all how to find these ponds. Um, I'm just gonna zoom into like a random place in the United States and hopefully pick out a few. Now, if you live in like Wisconsin or something like that, I've seen a couple of y'all's comments like, man, you're lucky that you have these ponds around you. But yeah, if you, you know, kind of live off somewhere, good luck to you you know if there's no ponds but sometimes it's all trial and error it's a lot of trial and error
Mm. That was beautiful. I was trying to skip it back in there. Hey! <laughs> a rod jumped out of my hand. I didn't fix my backlash, but also I didn't think I'd reach it. I thought I could cast it out. <laughs> That's a good way to break a rod. I don't think I've ever done that before. This must be a pretty good spot because there's two lures in the trees over here. We don't have too much wind blowing this evening, but the little bit of wind that we do have is kind of blowing over here towards this pocket. So, and just in theory, I would think this would be the better side to fish. We've had three bites already, so. Oh, that was a little nibble. All right, might not be a good idea, but we're gonna sit that right there, let it sink to the bottom, run over here, get the frog rod. <laughs> There we go. One of the frog. I think it's a good one too. Dude. I think it's a good one. Yeah, it's a big one. Good. Good one on the frog, baby. Oh my gosh, don't come off, please. Dude, freaking good one. Dude, look at that. Come here. Oh my gosh, dude. Look at that one. On the frog. Dude. I have not caught a fish on the bank in a pond like this in so long. Dude. All right, guys, so secret mission for today. We're actually doing a catch, clean, and cook. I'm just kidding. Oh my goodness. I hate I didn't bring my camera. This one's big camera worthy. I did bring the scale though. Whew, look at that one. That is a beautiful beautiful fish hook pop, popped right out i gotta see if i can't figure out how to change the scale from oh there we go pounds all right we're gonna do like oh i don't know i'm gonna say that i think he's he's definitely a four Three on the dot? No, he's bigger than that. Three, four? Okay. We'll go with that. That's fair enough. Dude. Three pounder on the frog. Whew. That's a good fish. All right. See you later. Big girl. Dude, look at that. Oh, I didn't bring my phone either. That's just the L on me. <laughs> See ya. Look at that. Boom, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, 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 only good old top water, top water frog. Oh, let's go. Biggest frog fish to date. Or, I don't want to say biggest to date, but biggest in a while. So it's just a really big and healthy one. I need to get a different scale. I don't like the scales that go up underneath the gills. I kind of like the ones that clamp to the mouths a little bit better. no real reason for it i just i don't know i don't really like going up through the gills i just feel like that's kind of not a good place to weigh a fish at but i'm pretty sure that scale came with the clamp i just lost there it came off when i used it for the first time so we might have to retitle this video from google maps because we might not get to the google maps portion of today i'll still show y'all how to find ponds we would pick this up tomorrow but 
we're going on that saltwater trip. So when you're watching this, I'm probably there. These ducks, right? <laughs> These ducks are like, oh, you better not eat that frog. You saw what he did to the last thing that ate it. Oh, this is such a good feeling. Catching fish on frogs. Hey, y'all. So this like algae muck, whatever, it's also on the bottom of the pond too. So I think that's what kind of makes it such a good place to try out. Or this is such a good bank to throw a frog down just because it's the same on the surface and the bottom. So these bass are kind of down in it and there's really not too much you can throw. You could probably, I don't even know about like a swim jig or like maybe swim a worm over the top of it. But I mean, if they're eating a the frog, we're not changing from that, of course. Cool. It's three bites on the frog. One big fish landed. Hey, there's a snake right there. Snake just swam out to the frog. bounce out of here we haven't caught one in a minute since that last one we caught we might have time for one more i have one that's pretty close to here that i want to try out so caught two decent ones out of here like nothing too too crazy but like a three and a half and probably a... hey there we go <laughs> hey that's another good one just out in the middle baby dude this pond is freaking loaded that's a pretty fit dude look at that one another fat one cool see ya awesome well <laughs> i just said we were gonna get out of here i still kind of want to go try another one i feel like the purpose of doing like a google maps video like this is to find ponds like just finding new bodies of water but i mean when you're catching twos and threes at one it's kind of hard to say like all right we're gonna leave this one and go find another one <laughs> we're not getting the results that we want but also you got to strike while the iron's hot it feels like the iron's hot right now because we're catching pretty good ones. so i think our first couple of casts of this frog probably was just a little bit too early now the sun's kind of went down a little bit more it's probably perfect but also i'm talking about leaving but we haven't even fished a slobber knocker out in the middle but I know I'm gonna get, I'm crazy comments. I can already hear them. But something's just telling me to go try another one. Yeah, I think we're gonna go try another one. All right guys, we have just made it to pond number two. We left pond number one. I know, I know I'm crazy. I know I'm crazy. This one honestly doesn't look as juicy, but looks can be deceiving sometimes. So um, we're gonna rig up a little fluke. I haven't thrown a fluke in a while, but in a previous video, I was talking about it. And I think it's, I think it's fluke time. So first bait that we're gonna be taking, we're gonna take the slobber knocker off. We're gonna take this little jaywalker out. It's kind of big for in here. I kind of wish I had a smaller size, but we'll be able to make the, that one. And like a lot of times guys, not telling you to go sneak on somebody's property and fish, but a lot of times if you get to a pond and there's like a no fishing sign up or something like that, I'm not gonna say a lot. One out of every 10 times. Sometimes you'll meet somebody cool, smile, say, hey, how you doing? You know, don't look like you're not supposed to be there. Even if you're not supposed to be there, just be like, hey, what's up, how you doing? And like, if it's a neighborhood pond, I'm not telling you to sneak onto somebody's yard, but like neighborhood pond, somebody walks up, tells you to leave, just leave, don't argue with them. But also if somebody's like, starts a conversation with you, doesn't ask you to leave, maybe not the first time, but after a couple times they see you out there, you know, just straight up ask them like, hey man, honestly, I don't live out here. Um, can I come fish the pond? Sometimes you'll get a yes, especially if it's like a cool guy or a cool lady, or you know, if it's an older lady, tell her that you'll bring her McDonald's or whatever. You gotta do whatever it takes to be able to get access to some of these ponds. I haven't thrown a fluke in a while. So guys, this is how I kind of started. I'm pretty sure I've told this story before, but when I first started bass fishing, this is how I 
caught my first bass was with the weighted fluke and then I found these belly weighted hooks because I'm pretty impatient and I don't really like to wait for the lure to fall. But I would rig up a fluke with the belly weighted hook. And then it's just like a, it's like a soft plastic jerk bait. Or it's not like it is pretty much a soft plastic jerk bait. We got that rigged up. We got a Jay Walker and we got a fluke powered jerk shad. Um, I'm not, I don't want to say this pond probably doesn't have as quality of fish in it because I haven't fished it, but I mean, just looking at it, like the other one looked pretty good, but I wasn't expecting a two, three pounders and a four or two, two pounders and a four. I think that one was a four pounder. I think my scale cheated me, but we're going to get down here. We're going to fish a little bit, try it out, see what we can get into. So stay tuned. Wish me luck. All right. So I tried to park in like the best looking part of the pond. So we have some cattails right here and you have like a little drain over there so like these two little spots look pretty good to me so also haven't fished it at all yet so we're gonna find out together oh yeah we got some stuff going on at the bank so it's normally a pretty good sign generally speaking and with these i'm just working them like a you know, like a jerk bait or whenever I fish one of these flukes I just work it like a general jerk bait. Hey, he just had one come up and eat it. I saw him. All right guys, so I'm gonna tell y'all how I like to find these ponds. Most of the ponds that I find are either through Apple or Google Maps. I have CarPlay in my truck, so I can ride around and look at Apple Maps or Google Maps. Most of the time I'm using Apple Maps, but I find that Google Maps, I just kind of like their mapping a little bit better. It looks more realistic. Um, but, and then from finding ponds or Apple or Google Maps, normally I'll mark them on Google Maps just a little bit easier to drop a waypoint. And then I go back and find the pond on Onyx. And then once you get on Onyx, you can scroll around and you can see the property owners. See, like there's some ponds right here. Warrior Met Coal Land LLC. So like whenever you find an LLC thing, normally you can send the people a message. So like, hey, I see a pond, like fisherman, I catch and release, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And ask if you can fish the pond. If you can find 10 of them and send 10 messages, you might get a yes from one of them. It's not guaranteed, but like, if there's places that you really want to fish and you're tired of fishing in the same old spots, you kind of have to do, it's kind of like playing a sport. You can't just play the sport and expect to be good at it. You got to put in the work, watch film, blah, blah, blah. This is kind of like watching film and studying. So a lot of the places that you see me fish or probably a lot of the other guys on YouTube, we're all doing this. I don't want to speak for everybody, but this is a way that I like to find ponds and I'll send messages or like if I catch somebody outside and they, you know, look like they're out there working or whatever and they don't own the place, sometimes you can run up and ask them real quick and they will maybe say yes, maybe say no. I've had a lot of no's and I've had a few yeses. You're probably going to get more no's than yeses, but if you really are looking for a new places to fish, it's one of those things you have to do. Um, so on Google Maps, a lot of the places that I find just start off from me driving around and then from driving around, then I mark it, send messages or just go out there and try to fish. If it's a neighborhood pond, nine times out of 10, I'm just going to go fish it. But literally you just scroll until you find water and then you just mark, like you can drop a pin. So let's see, let's find a, like here's like a little rock quarry. Rock quarries are normally pretty iffy. I, I haven't really had too much luck with getting permission on like a rock quarry. Let's see, like those probably aren't like fishy ponds. Let's see, like something like this, ABC Coke. Like if you could find somebody outside and just ask them if you can fish them. Or like the little side of the interstate ponds, like that might be private. Yeah, that's probably pretty private. But what you do is you just drop a pin on it and then just go drive to it, check it out. This is 26 minutes away from me. so. That's how I do that, guys. It's pretty, like, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's no, like, true secrets. The Onyx thing is pretty clutch because you can see who owns the pond, and then, like, also you can see if it's public property. Um, don't go sneaking around people's property. That's a good way to get shot, just bluntly saying it. But that's how I do it. Um, 
and a lot of times it's just from driving around, like say you have to go to work or like take a different route or if you're going to go to a friend's house, whatever, just have your maps on, be paying attention, be looking, don't drive off the road looking for ponds to fish, even though that can happen, but yeah. It's not too hard. It's not too difficult. You just got to put the time in and you should be able to figure it out. Um, hopefully that helped. Hopefully that was a decent enough explanation for y'all. It's not, there's nothing really complicated to it at all. You just drive, look for water, find water, find who owns it. If you need to do that, sometimes you can just send it. If there's no signs or anything, I send it, but use your contact clues. If it looks like it's somebody's backyard or anything like that, don't send it. Like you, I'd much rather sneak into a neighborhood pond and sneak into one that's like in somebody's backyard because that's a good way to you know so with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed today's video we didn't catch any fish at the second pond we had one bite um the first pond was pretty loaded so we're probably going to sneak back out there at some point and hopefully go get on some big bass because we caught a four pounder and i feel like if we had if we wouldn't have left we probably could have caught a couple more but i fished up and down the bank that might be a good kayak drop spot i just had that idea I don't know, maybe maybe if we get this video, if y'all really like this video, we'll go back and fish that one in the kayak. So with that being said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to fish them hard and have a great day. I'll see y'all.